Hello, Minotaur's masochist. Videos exploring the character designs and histories of older characters in League of Legends, which means it's time to ask a question. What is the deal with Alistar? Now, Alistar, like a lot of the very oldest League of Legends champions, has been in kind of a wasteland ever since he was released, where he hasn't really received any lore content. It's pretty much just, it's been balance updates and a single visual update a little while ago just to bring his his um old, old, old character model a bit more in line with the mo modern aesthetics of the game, but no real lore content, no real story update as to who this guy is, what he wants, how he behaves, and what's going on with him. So, Alistar the Minotaur is a Minotaur, and his story is that he's a Minotaur. I wish I was kidding when I said it's really that simple, but in a lot of ways it actually is. Now, if you know, know uh, the story of the original Minotaur from Greek mythology, well, there's a couple of stories about the Minotaur from Greek mythology, but the basic gist of the story of the Minotaur goes like this. King Minos um, of the Minoan kingdom promises that he will sacrifice if, that if Poseidon sends him a magnificent bull from the sea in order to validate his claim to the throne because he can talk to the gods, yada yada, he will sacrifice that magnificent bull to Poseidon and thus um, you know, validate his, his claim to kingship. So Poseidon sends from the depths of the sea an absolute magnificent bull up to Minos, and the King Minos takes a look at that bull and goes, that's a really great bull. Sure would be a shame if I had to kill it. So he crowns himself king with the favor of the gods, and then sacrifices a different bull to Poseidon, thus breaking his promise to the sea god, who is understandably kind of pissed about it. And from there, there's a number of different versions of how the story goes, but essentially, because of the gods being kind of pissed with King Minos, they enchant his wife such that she falls in love with the bull and has a child with the bull. And that child is the Minotaur. And the Minotaur grows so large and so ferocious and so terrifying that they can do nothing to control him. And so they ask, I believe it's Icarus, to build a giant labyrinth within which the Minotaur will be trapped and then they send in regular sacrifices of various maidens and youths to satiate the hunger of the beast. In other versions of the story, it's Zeus who turns into a bull and impregnates King Minos' wife with the Minotaur because Zeus does shit like that sometimes. And there's like versions that involve um, Ariadne and Phasis, um, Ariadne being one of the patron goddesses of spiders, I believe. Um, and there's versions where Aphrodite gets involved. Lots of different versions, but the, the basic gist of the story is one of vengeance. Vengeance by the gods for an insult or a slight committed against, you know, proper behavior and proper decency and proper subjection to the will of the gods. What does this have to do with Alistar in the game of League of Legends, you ask? Well, basically his story too is one that is found fundamentally about vengeance enacted through the rage of the Minotaur. In this instance, it makes him a somewhat more sympathetic character, where the Minotaur in Greek mythology is just like a monster, like just this terrifying half-man, half-bull thing that kills and eats whatever. Alistar is nominally a good guy. He's a mighty warrior with a fearsome reputation, who seeks revenge for the death of his clan at the hands of the Noxian Empire. Though he was enslaved and forced into a life of a gladiator, his unbreakable will was what kept him from truly becoming a beast. Now free of the chains, chains of his former masters, he fights in the name of the downtrodden and the disadvantage. His rage is much a weapon as his horns, hoops, and fists. So Alistar takes a little, slightly different twist on the classic myth of the Minotaur. And by the way, I'm not, in the course of all of this, saying that Riot were directly inspired by the original myth of the Minotaur. I don't know if that was part of the design process. I'm just noting that in their version of a Minotaur, vengeance and revenge for a slight is, or, or for a misdeed is still very much part of the motivation of the character. In Riot's instance, They've chosen, again, Alistar is kind of a microcosm of the very early principles of character design that League of Legends operated on back in the day, which is take an archetype, whatever archetype of some kind, twist it slightly just enough that it's original to us, and throw it in the game. And that's how you get champions like Fiddlesticks, who is a scare, Crow, who is scary and has crows, what a twist, and characters indeed um, like 
uh, Nasus, who is literally just Anubis out of Egyptian mythology, is how you get characters like Kale, who is literally just an avenging angel, and characters like Alistar, who is a Minotaur. And there's really not a lot more to him than that, in a lot of ways. Now, his um, bio, which is a very, very old bio, it really hasn't, as far as I can tell, it really hasn't changed much at all um, from the alpha of the game, really. He is captured by the Noxians after they lure him away from his village. They use him in gladiatorial games for entertainment, and Alistar is like, oh, this really sucks, and I'm about to become an evil, raging beast because of all this torment I'm going through, until a young girl named Aye... Aelia, I think, defends him and arranges for him to escape. And Alistar then decides that, okay, I'm free now, I'm gonna break Noxus apart. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna smash Noxus to pieces and also become an advocate against the political machinations of Noxus. Now, this is a bit of a holdover from the days of the League of Legends. Uh, as we can see here, he calls the light hit things that the Noxian military would prefer remain hidden. Something that, that has made him very unpopular with Noxus is noble. His charitable works has nerfed earned him several philanthropic awards but served an interesting contrast to the rage and destruction he's known for in battle. This characterization is something of a holdover from the days of the League of Legends itself, back when there was this sort of central sporting event that all of the champions competed in as celebrities. Like, this is celebrity language, like his charitable work has earned him several philanthropic awards. That's the kind of thing that happens to... Who's giving him philanthropic awards in the new state of League of Legends? There is no central authority for those kinds of things. We have a bunch of disparate city-states in various states of war. It's because it's old. It's because it's a holdover from a time when this story structure made any sense at all. It doesn't so much in the modern days. Nonetheless, um, we have, like, again, noting the parallels between the mythical Minotaur and Alistar, it's, it's again very much a story about a Minotaur being trapped in some constructed environment that is kind of cruel and seeking to escape. And it also um, contains a little, a, a little bit of the thematic that's also present in the myth of the Minotaur, which is the redemptive power of the love of women, which is a whole different thing and actually a little bit of a deep dive that's not really appropriate for this video. So let's have a look at his actual, well, oh, by the way, um, the Great Barrier, which is where Alastar's tribe lives is this little mountain range right here that separates Noxus from Piltover and Son. It is officially um, part of Noxian territory, but exactly where Alistar's village is on this map, I don't actually know. Necrit might know, uh, he tends to know these sorts of things, but me, no, I don't really have any idea. So, Alistar's character design. Like I said, Alistar's a Minotaur, and he's a Minotaur, and there is, <laughs> outside of him being purple with blue hair, which is an unusual color choice for a bull, that's, that, that's really kind of all there is to him. He is stereotypically a Minotaur, down to wearing a loincloth, and having chains around his arms, signifying the fact that he's been imprisoned, or been a prisoner for a while. Outside of that, there's really not very much to him at all. There's nothing, like, because it, in the concept of the story, at least, Alistar is supposed to be a member of this proud tribe of people with, like, with their own culture, with their own history, and, like, they've, they've got a whole, uh, there's a whole long line of, of things, there's something to them, right? They have a culture, they have a history, they have an aesthetic, they presumably have, you know, their own way of producing clothes, they presumably have their own sort of gestures and their own symbols and their own everything, but Alistar, no, he wears the gladiatorial outfit that he escaped from Noxus in, and hasn't gotten the chains taken off his hands yet, which seems like something a blacksmith could probably do for him if, if, if he wanted to. He's very much still defined by his role as a former Noxian prisoner. And it makes him very generic. Like, and, uh, by the way, why does he only have three fingers? That's a little bit odd, like he's a half-human, half-bull thing, and bulls don't have... They have two. So they have double splits on their hooves, I believe, but they don't have three. Anyway, that's digits. That's a whole different discussion. He's generic. He's, he's painfully, exceptionally, completely generic. And not, to be honest, very interesting at all. There, there really isn't a lot to talk about with him there. Like, he's got red eyes, which is sort of a callback to the stereotypical myth of 
you know, red flag to a bull that red has some kind of connection to aggression with bulls. It also has a connection to aggression in, in general, but there's, like, if you just look at the character design, there's really not a lot about him to suggest that he's more than a rampaging escaped beast. Like, visually, there's not a lot that communicates that. He looks like a vicious, dangerous minotaur who will kill you as soon as look at you. And he doesn't look like a thinking, feeling being who has a lot more to him, who, like, who has some sense of, 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 of culture, who has some sense of heritage or something like that. Because I would assume the first thing he, he would do upon escape is find some clothes for himself that express him, his culture, the culture that was taken from him, the culture that he's trying to avenge, the people that he's trying to avenge. Like, that would be the first thing on my mind if, if I was a Avenger hellbent on taking vengeance for my people is to represent them in some way in my aesthetics and my visuals, and that's not really there with Alistar because, well, he's a really old character design made of old stereotypes that were never really criticized in the update process. He, and I, I don't know if Riot are ever gonna make substantial changes to him, really, because, again, much like characters like Silly and much like characters like Fid Fiddlesticks and like most characters that are from the alpha and beta phases, He's so old, and he's been with the game for so long, he's been popular for so long, that the way he looks right now, the way that, that this character is expressed, is kind of fundamental um, to who he is in League of Legends, and so, within Riot, there might be an understandable reluctance to make two radical changes.